So today we're going to be talking about experiment four, which is the uh, distillation experiment. And the first thing that we need to cover is what is actually a distillation. Uh, technically, a distillation is the purification of orga uh, organic liquid mixtures, basically. Uh, it allows us to uh, purify liquids very easily uh, by using boiling and condensation processes. Uh, many of you are familiar with uh, distillation if, from nothing else other than the movies where you've seen uh, moonshiners distilling their corn mash, uh, purifying uh, the alcohol in a, in a still. And we're going to be using a microscale still in this um, experiment to purify a binary uh, mixture. There are four types of distillation. There are, the first two are the two types of distillation that we're going to be dealing with in this laboratory. They're known as simple distillation and fractional distillation, but there are also these other two types known as vacuum distillation and steam distillation. And so you need to know that there are more uh, types of distillation than what we're going to be talking about because as you get up into some more advanced courses in chemistry, you will be using the concepts of vacuum and steam distillation uh, quite a bit. Uh, the technique of distillation relies on the fact that liquids have a boiling point. And if you'll recall from your general chemistry, uh, the boiling point is defined as that point at which the vapor pressure of the uh, liquid equals the applied pressure. And the applied pressure you probably learned was atmospheric pressure. And of course, atmospheric pressure changes from day to day. And so boiling points are only a constant if you know what that applied pressure is. So water doesn't always boil at 100 degrees Celsius. It depends on the uh, atmospheric pressure. And this actually has consequences uh, in terms of things that you do every day, like cooking. So, for example, uh, if you live uh, here in Mississippi, of course, where we're pretty close to sea level, water boils pretty close to 100 degrees Celsius. However, if you live in Denver, Mile High City, right, uh, you're up higher, the atmospheric pressure, of course, being lower, water boils at a significantly lower temperature, and hence it takes longer to cook foods, like pasta, for example, at higher elevations if you live in a mountainous region. Uh, as opposed to living here close to the coast, where we are pretty close to one full atmospheric pressure. This is a uh, model of what's going on when we have a liquid in a container. So I've just drawn uh, a, a basic beaker here. We've got some liquid, liquid being represented by these green X's. Uh, however, when you have a liquid in a container, you don't just have the liquid in the container. Above that liquid, you also have a vapor from that liquid. And these are in equilibrium with one another. So I've drawn a couple of arrows here to show the equilibrium, meaning that liquid molecules can turn into gas molecules or vapor, and vapor can then, of course, come back into the liquid. And if you have a pure liquid, the composition of the liquid and the vapor are going to be identical. We only have X's, so to speak, in the liquid. So we're only going to have X's in the vapor. And so when we have a pure liquid, we have uh, this type of situation. However, this isn't true if we have a binary mixture, that is a liquid that contains more than one component, binary meaning two components. So I'm going to take the red marker here and put in a couple of red circles to show that now we have a binary mixture. So we've got two components in the liquid. We would expect to see uh, two components in the uh, vapor as well. However, what you notice is that the liquid composition and the vapor composition are not identical. And that's what we get when we have binary liquids. And so when we're trying to purify compounds by distillation, we need to look at something known as a phase diagram. And so the phase diagram on the y-axis has temperature. And on the x-axis, we're going to look at percent composition of B. So we've got a two-component mixture here. This is going to be A plus B. And A is going to be our higher boiling component. B is going to be our lower boiling component. So in 0% B, that's the boiling point right there for component A. At 100% B, where we have no A present at all, and I'm going to arbitrarily set that as the boiling point 
of B. And again, the boiling point of B being lower than the boiling point of A. And so now we have two curves that we need to look at. As we add more and more B, the lower boiling point component, we would expect the boiling point of the mixture to decrease. And in fact, that's what we see. Okay, it kind of looks like that. And if we look at the vapor composition, we see something similar as well. Let's go with green for the vapor. So this is the vapor. This is the liquid. So liquid phase, vapor phase. And let's arbitrarily take a point at say 50% composition. And if we draw a line up from the 50%, we see the boiling point for that 50-50 mixture of A and B. It's at this point. However, we notice that at 50% AB liquid, it's an equilibrium with vapor that contains, well, just looking at that, let's call that 90% B. So the liquid gives you a vapor that is at a different composition. So here we have 50-50, A and B in the liquid, but 90-10, B to A in the vapor. So if we take this and condense this back down into the liquid, we would have purified our uh, mixture to 90% pure B. There would still be 10% uh, A present, but that nonetheless, that is significantly uh, purified from the starting 50-50 component. The, uh, what we need to look at here is this solid line that we have drawn here is known as a theoretical plate. And simple distillation by definition is one theoretical plate. So it's one boiling condensation cycle. So we heat the mixture up to until it boils, gives us a vapor, then we recondense that down to a liquid again and collect that in a separate flask. Uh, using our distillation apparatus that your TA is going to talk to you about, and this is known as a theoretical plate. Now you can imagine taking this liquid again, reboiling it, going through that uh, condensation uh, process again, and you would actually get essentially pure B at that point uh, by simply taking that and redistilling it. Well, that becomes kind of a problem because you don't want to do a simple distillation and collect everything and then uh, redistill it. That takes a lot of time. So fortunately for us, we can use what's known as a uh, fractional distillation apparatus that will allow us to do multiple distillations very easily. Okay, so that's what a fractional distillation is. Show you an example where we just have two theoretical plates, but uh, there are uh, fractional distillation apparatus that can actually give you thousands of uh, theoretical plates uh, fairly easily. So if we look at our phase diagram again, all we really need to do is somehow boil this again, bring that over, and then we'll essentially get pure B through two theoretical plates. So this would be theoretical plate one, theoretical plate uh, two. And the way that we do this is we use what's known as a fractionating column. You're going to use one of these in, uh, in lab, and it's just simply a glass column. You're going to use your air condenser from your microscale kit to do this. And inside that uh, air condenser or that glass column, you're going to pack it with some copper wool. And I'm just going to draw that as a squiggly line there. So you've got your fractionating column full of uh, this glass wool. And so as your vapor comes up into the fractionating column, it comes into contact with that surface area of that copper wool, condensing. And so it will condense into a liquid as it moves up, 
and it will start to run back down the column. But the bottom of the column is quite hot. And so when it comes down, it will reboil again and move up a little further, and then it will reboil again. And it will go through multiple theoretical plates, if you will, or these boiling condensation cycles by simply putting a longer column in between the collection flask and your uh, pot, if you will, the pot that you're actually heating. And you go through multiple condensation, or excuse me, boiling uh, vaporization condensation cycles, ultimately giving you multiple theoretical plates. And this column allows us then to do uh, this process without actually having to physically isolate each fraction and redistill it. We can do that within the column itself. And so we can uh, do that quite nicely. So uh, in lab, your TA is going to show you how to set up both a simple and a uh, fractional distillation apparatus. You're going to be working in teams. You will need to recall um, that you have to save your fractions because in the next lab next week, you'll be using those fractions to, uh, to do some gas chromatography work. And the next video, we'll be going over the uh, theory of uh, GC or gas chromatography.